To find out how her great-great-grandfather made his fortune, Emilia is heading north to the Yorkshire city of Leeds. She's ordered a copy of Samson's birth certificate to discover more about his background. So, Samson Fox was born on the 11th of July, 1838, at New Road, Bowling. His father was Jonas Fox, married to Sarah Fox, formerly Pearson. Occupation of father, overlooker. I don't know what that is. Signature of informant, the mark of Sarah Fox, mother. The mark? That must mean that she was illiterate. So this is the 1851 census, and it looks like the family have moved to Leeds. Jonas Fox, head. Power loom overlooker. And Samson Fox, his son, was power loom weaver. So that means he worked in a textile mill at the age of 13. So they weren't a wealthy family at all. In the 1850s, Leeds lay at the heart of Yorkshire's road and canal networks and was one of the centres of Britain's Industrial Revolution. Its traditional textile mills competed with newer engineering works and foundries, which had sprung up to supply goods to the growing British Empire. For child workers like Samson Fox, conditions were often brutal. But Leeds was also a city of opportunity where new steam-based technologies were thriving. To learn more about her great-great-grandfather's life in the city, Emilia has come to the Armley Mills Industrial Museum to meet curator Neil Dowland. Hi, Emilia. Hi. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you, Neil. Welcome to Armley Mills. Oh, thank you. Do be very careful on the rails. Yes, uh, no tripping. (laughs) Come this way. Gosh, I go to the most extraordinary places every day now. (laughs) I found out that my great-great-grandfather, Samson, Uh was a power loom weaver. Yeah, Samson Fox worked in a mill very much like this one from the age of eight. Eight? Eight. And that was quite normal to start work at the age of eight Yes, very normal, yeah, yeah. But he doesn't actually stay here particularly long. By Mm -hmm. 15, he's an apprentice in an engineering works. They're producing locomotives, machine tools, agricultural vehicles, everything you can think of. Despite his humble origins and lack of formal education, Samson rose quickly through the ranks, from apprentice engineer to skilled worker. Here we have his marriage certificate. And so this is 1861. So Samson is 22 years old, mm-hmm. listed as a mechanic. Yep. So he's a, he's a sort of shop floor mechanic at this point. Yeah, he? he's working with machines. Right. Yeah. But if we look at the next census, 10 years later, we can see how much has changed. There they are. So, Samson Fox is now 32, Mm -hmm. has got three children now, and Arthur W. Fox, Willie Fox, is one. Willie Fox is my great-grandfather. It's all coming together, isn't it? Isn't it? And what does that say? Master employing. Master employer of 11 men and six boys. So this has all happened in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. But within the next three years, things are going to change again. He's not going to change business this time, but he's going to expand because by 1874, he founds the Leeds Forge Company. Sounds very impressive. (laughs) It is, and this is where his career and his life really takes off. I will show you what he achieved there. Emilia's great-great-grandfather, Samson Fox, found himself at the forefront of the world's fastest-growing industry. Advances in British engineering were radically changing the way the world worked and creating vast fortunes. At his new metalworks, the Leeds Forge Company, Samson decided to produce parts for the rail and shipping industries on a huge scale. I'd just like to come this way. This is our open air store, and it's where we tend to keep a lot of the larger industrial objects that we've got here. Looks like we're going into the wilderness. It (laughs) does, doesn't it? It looks like a bit of an elephant's graveyard, doesn't it? (laughs) 
The important thing about Samsung Fox is he's an innovator, so he adapts technology. It's, it's all about making machines faster, cheaper, more efficient, and that's where the money is. So, I've come to show you something very important, and I would like to present to you the corrugated boiler flue. The corrugated boiler flue? I know. What does it do? Yes, it doesn't sound much on its <laughs> own, does it? But it's probably one of the most important inventions of the late 19th century. I've got a smaller model here, which will show you how the idea works. If you take that piece of uh, brass there mm -hmm. and squeeze it, See, you can squeeze it with your hand, can't yeah. you? It's malleable. Yeah. Now take that and try and squeeze that. I it's can't. much more resistant to pressure, isn't yeah. it? It's much stronger. The flues in a traditional steam engine were the furnaces in which coal was burned to heat the boiler. As the flues were subjected to intense heat and pressure, they would eventually crack, causing the boiler to fail. Samson Fox's corrugation of the boiler flue strengthened it and enabled steam engines to work at a higher pressure and produce more power. The impact of this simple innovation was enormous. The first Fox corrugated boiler flue was sold to a Barrow shipyard in June 1877. Two years later, a steamship fitted with the new flue sailed from Britain to South Africa in record time. By the 1880s, Samson's flue had been installed in factories, locomotives, and shipping across the world. And at only 40 years of age, had made him a multi-millionaire. It seems like such a simple idea, but obviously it was a, a sort of revolutionary idea. Simple ideas are often the best, and boy, is this a good idea. And it made him a very, very rich man. That's amazing. So that's your ancestor. <laughs> I can't believe it. He's got an innate mechanical brain. I wish I'd inherited that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an inert mechanical brain. <laughs> I brought you to a different part of the museum, mm -hmm. um, a bit more affluent looking, to bring show you one final object. And what I would like you to look at, this portrait here. This is a portrait of Samson Fox commissioned after the corrugated flue was developed. Presented to Sampson Fox Esquire by the employees and friends of the Leeds Forge Company Limited. Is that inscription on the flue? Do you know, I've never noticed that before, but I think it is. That is a corrugated boiler flue, isn't it? <laughs> we know Sampson Fox is a, a popular employer. The reason he was so popular is he's very hands-on. He will be down there on the shop floor, he'll have his sleeves rolled up, he'll be working with them. Well, that's because of where he started. Yeah, yeah. But within a few years, he moves to Harrogate and leaves Leeds. For business or for personal reasons? For personal reasons, I suppose. When you make a lot of money in Leeds, you do go to Harrogate. You take the waters. Ah. By 1882, at the age of only 44, Samson Fox had transformed himself from a child worker in a textile mill to one of the wealthiest men in Britain. His son Willie was now at a public school and Samson's family were about to take their place in the upper echelons of Victorian society. Well, this is a whole new element to my family background that I didn't know about. To know that there is that sort of brain in the family of um, who could deal with mechanics and engineering and understand them. I'm really hoping that the baby took this in today. Please, please note, engineering mechanics, good move. 